Hey folks, we're here with a new series on the Enneagram and team building. Now this topic is really more important than ever because so many of us are working remotely from home, which adds a layer of complexity to teamwork. But before I go any further, I want to introduce my good friend, author of The Road Back to You, host of the Typology Podcast and the host of this series, Mr. Ian Morgan Cron. How are you doing, Ian? You know, I'm, uh, I'm great. And you are glowing. And I think I know the reason why. You just returned from spending uh, a week long with our mutual friend, Enneagram 2, Michael Cusick from Restoring the Soul. How was it, man? Yes, I had such an amazing experience. And I'm so excited because I learned so much more about myself and the person I want to become. It was wonderful. I'm glad, man. Well, tell me, what else are you excited about? I am excited because we have this new series, Enneagram and Team Building. And I was thinking before we really uh, move further, why don't we give our folks that are listening a, and watching a good definition of team? Yeah. So a team is a group of people with complementary skills who are committed to a common purpose for which they hold themselves accountable. So now that's the most concise definition I could find. But when I read it, I thought, oh, I want to add something to it. And it's this. A team is a group of people with complementary skills and diverse personalities who are committed to a common purpose for which they hold themselves accountable. That's good. Yeah, I once heard a, a psychology professor and consultant say something that absolutely blew my mind. He says, every team has problems. And the majority of those problems are personality problems. Wow, that's an amazing statement. It is. And in my experience as a corporate consultant, Enneagram teacher, I concur with him. Hmm. And I believe that the knowledge and application of the Enneagram can dramatically lessen personality problems and really help build stronger teams. That's good. Now, I know you've been doing quite a bit of consulting uh, with some corporations. What happens when leaders and teams introduce and integrate the Enneagram on their teams? Well, it's incredible. And it's, this is a short list, okay? It increases motivation. It improves communication. It uh, promotes cooperation and collaboration. It reduces conflict. It prevents misunderstandings. It elevates empathy, and it ensures that people feel seen, heard, and valued for their unique contribution to the team's efforts. Such a powerful tool. Now, in this series, we're going to answer the question, what do I need to know and do in order to effectively lead or work alongside each of the nine Enneagram types to build stronger teams? And today, we're talking about the number Two, like our friend Michael Cusick. That's right, the helper. That's right. Yep. So first, uh, as I've mentioned before, it's so important for each of us to understand the unconscious motivation of each Enneagram type that habitually drives the ways that they act, think, and feel. Mm -hmm. So keep in mind that twos are motivated by a need to meet the needs of others. That's great. So what can twos, their leaders, and their fellow team members do to help optimize the helper's performance? Yeah, so let's start with, uh, with what happens when you have twos on your team who lack self-awareness, okay? Now, helpers believe they can't be loved for who they are, so they turn helping into a strategy to earn the validation and approval of others, okay? <clears throat> and so helper team members may compulsively keep assistance and advice on others, regardless of whether or not those people ask for their help or even want it. So this behavior can become intrusive and smothering at times. Mm. So what happens when twos are 
healthy and self-aware, how do they affect the team? Well, when they're self-aware, I mean, Enneagram twos really help build teams. They are the most caring, hospitable, affectionate, supportive, and servant-hearted people in the world, as you discovered with our friend Michael Cusick, right? right. Mm -hmm. So at their best, self-aware twos develop strong boundaries, and they understand what is and isn't theirs to do. They radiate warmth and inspire fellow team members through their ability, their unparalleled ability, to make interpersonal connections with other people. Love that. So let's do as we've done in the past and give our people three tips uh, for how twos can become great leaders and team members. Start with number one. Appreciate your twos. Mm. As team members, right, twos are motivated by words of appreciation and approval. So at every chance you get, make sure you tell them how valuable they are to you and to the team. That's good. And tip number two? Offer your support. Like twos on teams rarely ask for help, at least not directly. And they don't know how to receive it when it's offered. So you need to ask twos what they need or how you can support them. And if you do, you'll get it back tenfold. Oh, that's good. Tip number three. Establish interpersonal connection with them. Okay. On teams, twos are emotionally attuned people with highly developed interpersonal skills, right? Mm -hmm. They thrive in positions that have a lot of people contact with uh, customers or with fellow team members, right? Mm -hmm. So you're gonna, especially at this time, want to encourage in-person interactions or Zoom meetings to satisfy their need for personal connections. That's good. So show your appreciation, offer your support, and establish interpersonal connections. Um, do we have a good closing thought to go, go out on? Yeah, I, uh, I read a quote the other day that I thought was great for twos. Mm -hmm. This person said, an amazing thing happens when you stop seeking approval and validation. You find it. Mm. People are drawn like magnets to those who know who they are and cannot be shaken. So the the hope for twos is they learn who they are and that they cannot be shaken. Mm, that's a great thought and blessing to go out on. We love you twos and we look forward to the next episode of Enneagram and Team Building. See you later.